Live. Hi everyone. This is Danielle Pearson. Hey. Danielle has done my makeup for how many years now? It's been a few. Like how many? Like eight? Ooh. What was the first time you did my makeup? I wouldn't go that far. Like five or six? I think it's been longer. Really? Because it was for a, sh a Tyler Perry show called, it was a premiere oh, of yeah. that show. Yeah. Um, what was the name of that show? Oh my word. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Are we talking too close to home? Yes! Oh my goodness, ladies. So we oh. met at the premiere of Too Close to Home, which had That's to have amazing. been at least five years. so beautiful. Well, you made me look beautiful. Yeah. Danielle is... That was insane. That was a good one. That was a good one. We should have posted that. We didn't use... I had to pull up pictures, too. Yeah. It was actually hard to find, like, pictures since this entire year we haven't done anything, too. I know. And then before that, the last time you did my makeup was for the wrap party of season three of Station 19. I know. And I love that we're both Danielle. This has always yeah, been the running joke. It's a little confusing. Danielle but... times two. Mm -hmm. Double, double Danielle's. Um, but anyway, so Danielle's going to do the makeup look that you guys chose. And are you excited? I'm, I'm really so excited. excited. We've been talking about doing this for, it feels like a while now. It's been forever. So Before glad... COVID even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So I'm glad that We Chat Wednesdays has finally become this. So this is the look we're actually going to do. If you guys don't remember, just, can you guys see it? Everyone voted for their favorite look, and this was the one that y'all decided on. Yep. That's Maddie, by the way. I don't know if, Maddie, did you tell people that you're the one holding the phone? <laughs> I'm holding the phone. Hi, everyone. I'm in the back. And hi, everyone, wherever you are in the world. It's kind of a, a gloomy and overcast today in Los Angeles. We're going to have a nice little rainstorm come in. I hope so. so it's kind of nice, home, comfy weather, so we're all in our comfy socks today and freezing. Perfect time <laughs> to stay at home, play around with makeup. Yes. Anything else you want to add, Danielle, before we start? Uh, just that we did this for, what was oh, yeah. the? Home and Family. Home and Family. So, so Hallmark Home and Family. Yeah. Does a, like a yeah. talk show. Yeah. And I got to go on the show and that's what this picture's from. Yeah. Gorgeous. So it's kind of a glam, glowy, bronzy, glam day look with a bit of a wing. <laughs> um, so yeah, we can get started if you guys are ready. And I'll just keep talking. Yes, too. Please, and please. obviously anybody submit questions or anything you have for Danielle um, or any makeup pertaining questions or red carpet stuff. Um, and Danielle and I will answer them as uh, the questions go on. So Maddie will be reading them off. And make sure you say who asked it to. 100%. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So okay. I'll let you do all the talking of what you're doing. Well, now. I'll just walk through this. This is one of my favorite products. Uh, I love to just kind of moisten the skin with this mm. first. It smells so good. From Yonka, it smell like? the Parisian brand. It's really, really lovely. All of my clients seem to really like this. And Yonka's been around forever. Yeah, I mean, it's good stuff. You bought, you've bought that before, right? Yeah, I used to buy it. Um, my aunt got me into it a long time ago, and I used to love it. And that toner was my favorite. The toner is so good. So yeah, I just like to get so that all dry. <laughs> And then... This is so fun. Yeah. I haven't had my hair and makeup done, well, makeup done in so long. It's just nice to get all dolled up. Totally. Besides doing it myself, which is never as good as when you do it. Oh my goodness. You're always beautiful. Though. And Danielle is very naturally blurry, you can see, but I'm just going to add a tiny bit more moisturizer just so everything goes on really smoothly. And this is, um, this is the Tatcha Dewy Skin moisturizer and that will just really help everything glide beautifully and should we post um after a story of all the products yeah we could do that so you guys in case anyone's interested in copying this yeah. um how important would you say prep is for the skin which is what this is called like putting the moisturizer the toner oh my god the lotion yeah it's so important you have to be hydrated but also you don't want to be too slippery so your makeup's just slipping right off we have some great questions coming in already. Yeah. I see, um, I never know how to read these usernames, but JXLIA.47 wants to know, when did you start really wearing makeup? I'm 17 and I haven't started, so I want to know where to begin. So that's a question for me or for Danielle or for both of us? I think yeah. both, yeah, for you, Danielle. <laughs> yeah. Um, T tell us about when you started wearing makeup. I've, I, I was never very good at putting makeup on myself. So personally, I did, I, in my personal life, I didn't wear a ton of makeup at all, but I started acting when I was young. So I would say for events and, and films and television, like I was starting young. I mean, I started doing print when I was seven. So I've been having makeup on for work for a long time, but in my personal life, 
it wasn't until probably about, you know, 16, 17 in high school, maybe 15, when I started playing around with eyeshadows and mascaras, but I was, I never knew how to do my eyebrows. I didn't know how to do blush. And so I usually just stayed away from it. Um, but if anything, I did mascara and eyeshadow. But I mean, I think there's something really great about, you know, limiting when you put makeup on. Like you don't need to wear makeup every day. I think it's really beautiful to embrace your natural beauty, you know, the days that you're not wearing makeup and then when you need to wear makeup to I'm, just learn how to do it. Totally. There's something to be said about a natural look, a yeah. daytime look, a nighttime look. That's why I think it's awesome that Danielle's here because she can kind of, you know, walk us through some of the differences of what makes this look a daytime look for a, an event that you would go to in the afternoon compared to something you'd go to in the evening, you know? And is what is the big significant difference between like a daytime look and a nighttime look, Danielle, for you? Well, I mean, a daytime look is a little uh, less smoky. It's a little less intense. You still are going to be on camera, so you still want everything to really pop. So it's mostly just staying away from anything that's too heavy, going more in the neutral shades, all of that kind of stuff. Um, do you have to go, because like say, but say someone's not going on camera, it's just for daily makeup. Would you need to go lighter if you're not going to be in front of cameras or less powder or less shine? Like all, what do you I avoid? mean, all of that, it de really depends on the person. Me personally, I don't like a lot of foundation and powder so if, the, if it's someone like me then I would you know stay away from putting too much of that stuff on my skin and just really focus on making the skin highlighted and pop and all of that now what did you just put on now was that just more lotion or primer so I did like a highlighter all around a stay highlighter and then after that I did the primer so okay. since you're all nice and glowy then I just took it down just the tiniest bit, and so the makeup can stay. And that's the primer, and right? And that's the primer. That's Which I know box. nothing about. <laughs> I didn't even know it was a thing. And now it makes sense why my makeup always slid off my face when I was younger. Right, right. <laughs> it's a, it makes a huge difference. Um, and now I'm going to go in with the Airbrush Foundation from Charlotte Tilbury. And... Danielle has a little redness today, uh, so we're just going to take that down. Why do I have redness? Oh, I don't know. The weather. <laughs> you wearing those crazy costumes that you wear to work and all that stuff. So um, I'm mixing two shades because she's kind of in between. And that's the thing. How do you figure out which shade of foundation to use on your face? You kind of can just, you just kind of just have to go in there. If you're just doing it personally, kind yeah. of, it's best to just go into the store if you can. I know COVID makes that a bit harder. Um, but, you know, a lot of the stores have excellent, re, you know, return policies. So it's kind of trial and error, but... It's sometimes, I've noticed, hard to tell. Like, I used to get a foundation that was a shade lighter, so I didn't realize it, and I would put it on. It looks like it matched my skin, but then I would notice that I was in pictures too white. Too white. Yeah. So it all that also. I mean, I finally figured it out. But being on set and having different foundations yeah. and discovering what foundation matches my skin tone, but also my skin, my color coloring changes also oh, in the yeah, summer. Exactly. Um, I get a little tanner, even though it's hard to imagine because I'm so pale. You're very pale right now, but you do get color. Just in case no one heard her, she said I'm very pale right now. Yeah. <laughs> this is a great question from Marina Stan. Yeah. Um, they want to know what your favorite look, Danielle, is that Danny, that Danielle, Danielle one L, <laughs> Danielle double L. Okay. So Danielle double L, what's your favorite look that Danielle single L has ever done on you? Oh, I can't decide. That's why I had to do the the actual like competition of like what people thought I should actually do. Because every single look Danielle's done on me has been, I, I feel like I'm a star every time. I'm like, oh my God, I look so pretty. Um, so I would say I can't narrow it down to one. There's been... Like all those four that I posted, I absolutely love, but I've loved even our old, like one of those posts, the one that had the silvery, um, eyeshadow mm -hmm. was from one of our first premieres back in the day too. Like it's ne it's never gotten boring or, yeah. or stagnant. Like yeah. every look is different. 
Um, and she helps me pick up my wardrobe most of the time, just so everyone knows. So when I wear it, <laughs> I usually have like two or three options and then I'm like, Danielle, which one should which I go with? One? So it's hard to say which one I would say. Um, I think what you're, what was the silvery one? The silvery one was for that premiere for 48 hours. It was the blue blouse with the white pants. It was super early on. You did my my makeup. And that's the other thing that's so crazy is a lot of times we do makeup in like random places. We gotta talk about New York Fashion Week. Oh, but like <laughs> we did it was the one we did my friend Jeff as an editor and he was in an editing bay and it was close to so at the time I lived in Calabasas, so it was inconvenient for her to do my makeup all the way in Calabasas and then have to drive an hour plus to you. get to a red yeah. carpet yeah. um just because too i get nervous i start touching my face so i do bad. things that like sweating i sweat whatever it is so it's better to be as close to the red carpet as possible so i remember that um we went into their editing place the building it was like a brick wall mm -hmm. and you took a picture of me in front of the brick wall okay um you'll just show me i'll show you i, I know. remember being there but we went there twice didn't we I think so. I think we yeah. went there again a second time because everybody was like, oh, nice to see you again. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, but oh, New York Fashion Week is crazy. I know you guys have seen that I've done that twice now. Yes. Yeah, twice. The first time was... Well, you like, right. I think you did it th three times. One of the times you couldn't go. Yeah. Um, But New York Fashion Week is like, I got changed in a car. Danielle did my makeup and adjustments to my makeup in the car. Like we went from a pink lip to a red lip to uh, bronze cheeks or blush cheeks to bronze cheeks, depending on the outfit, to up hair or down hair to up hair, up hair to yeah, down hair. Yeah, hair looks. Yep. The whole, the whole nine. Uh, New York Fashion Week is one of those things where you're just constantly on the go trying to get to all the great runway shows, which we haven't obviously done in a while, and trying to make each look stand out and be different. And she's a pro at that. That's so cool. That must take so much creativity. That's awesome. I know my favorite look I've seen Danielle do on Ooh. you was for the Mercedes Benz Oscar party. Oh, that was I love that one. <laughs> oh my gosh, she she like went in basically, you know, with no makeup on, and you came out looking like a Hollywood starlet from the nineteen forties. It was amazing. That was a very starlet look. The hair, the makeup, the whole, the dress. Yeah. Um, and the red lip, which is always hard to pull off. I actually can't pull off a red lip myself every well, time I've done it my personal. Red. What color did you go it with? It was like a really deep pink. It was very noted, pretty. guys. Yeah. I, yeah. I saw somebody ask what your favorite color lipstick was. I'd like to find her username, but for people who want to know what is your favorite color lipstick, do you have me or Danielle? You. <laughs> <laughs> and then I go, me or Danielle, and we're both saying Danielle. Um, my favorite, my go-to is kind of like a, would you call that mauve? Sure, like a nudie mauve. Yeah, I tend to go a little bit above. Like it has a little pink in it, but it's usually a matted or, or like nuded. Or like a rose. Yeah, I guess you'd call it rose. I'll show you, I'm sure. The question was from Chelsea Bonthuis, by, by the way. Um, Chelsea, if you're still watching, I hope you are. Thanks for the question, Thanks Chelsea. for the question. Uh, that's my go-to is I have this kind of lip liner that's, it, I just feel safe with it. I know it looks good in picture. I don't take chances with my personal makeup when I'm doing it myself. Um, the one that takes chances is this one yeah. <laughs> because I just, I don't know what looks good. And then I've discovered that I'll go and take a picture and then I look horrible in the picture. So I did red lips myself once and the picture's out there. People post it, but like yeah. there, it was for a, a dinner for the end of season two and I wore a red lip, and every time I see it, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> oh, that be that bad. I mean, it's hard when I'm comparing it to the makeup you've done on me, you know? Yeah. Like, I looked way too white, and my lips looked bright red. Angel so. Raleigh wants to know if you could only choose one makeup item, which one would you choose? Mascara. Oh, I love that. That's a hands down. Yeah, got it. Yeah. You too? No, no, no. Mine, I well, now it doesn't matter, but mine would always be lips. Oh, lips. really? Yeah, lips are cheeks. I love blush. Well, and you vote the what isn't always the trick that you can always put lips on your cheeks? You can do that if you need to, sure. It's not always like the. Yeah. That's, that's kind of like, like a, too. That's like an emergency. Turn this way a bit. Emergency trick for sure. Um, mascara is always my go to. Everyone knows that uh, I spend when I do my own makeup. 
the I spend about fifteen minutes on my mascara. Like, <laughs> I like that. Really? Yeah, because yeah. I curl. And then we have to, I get made fun of it on set. So I curl and one at a time. And then I have to do, it's Elizabeth Arden Grand Entrance. And I swear it makes my eyelashes look Ooh. double the length that they are. And I have to almost, that. I have to almost put it on like strand at a time. But that's my only thing I wanna, that I feel like I'm really good at. I want to check in with Danielle Pearsons yes. right now too. And here where we're at in the tutorial thus far. Like what, what step are we kind of... So we're still just kind of perfecting the skin with uh, the two shades of foundation of the Charlotte Tilbury. And then I also went in with my Kosas concealer and I've just been kind of concealing under the eyes, um, just making a little bit of highlight with a concealer like uh, in the middle of the forehead, around the nostrils, down the chin, and we're just about, it looks pretty gorgeous, so we're just about to go in and set it with a bit of setting powder. Beautiful. Her skin looks flawless. Yeah. What's the difference between foundation and concealer? Because this used to always throw me early on. Oh, really? It still kind of does. I really, I know I put concealer usually here, and I put foundation everywhere, but then <laughs> I see other people do makeup and they put concealer other places. So what is the difference between well, foundation and concealer? It's usually, it's the consistency. So you mm. want your concealer to be a bit thicker, so it's okay. helping to hide things a bit better. So what are we hiding on me? Well, I mean, everyone's got something <laughs> to hide. It, you don't have everyone's got something to hide. There you go. <laughs> you don't have any blemishes or anything today, so that's really good but if you did and always under eyes people need a bit more concealer so danielle's still very young and vibrant so she doesn't need a lot of concealing thanks these for saying days, but <laughs> for Feels the normal like... folks <laughs> need a bit more. i feel like i'm always constantly putting like eye masks on or those yeah eye masks yeah, that's um nice. tons of lotion i use a lot of lotion but i think the biggest difference in making sure skin looks as healthy as possible is water water you gotta drink oh yeah water's eat healthy too yeah really. totally it's a whole it's the whole thing it's almost hands down like i i don't do dairy but every once in a while i'll cheat and have dairy but i have to say that when i gave up dairy my skin like got way better so much better yeah that's good i do have to say and everyone's different that doesn't work for everyone but if you are having any acne issues try try getting rid of dairy for a couple months and see if you notice a difference because mm -hmm. it really changed something for me and everyone's different sometimes it's genetic sometimes it's hormonal you um, and stefania are both really into skincare so i know mm -hmm. that we're going to do some more skincare conversations on the wechat wednesday lives yeah stefania's going to be with her facialist next wednesday because stefania struggled a lot with acne oh, she um, did. yeah okay. which you wouldn't even know now her skin's beautiful yeah. Um, and her facialist was really, she, the, she's the one she credits with getting her skin back to, um, a good place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be, I think like all of this stuff is really cool to share because when you get your makeup done for, you know, station 19 or an event, it feels very behind the scenes, but this is sort of like the, the reveal of, you know, what goes on before you hit the carpet or, you know, end up at an event or on camera. Yep. This is, this is fun for sure. You're seeing all the secrets into how it's all done, mm -hmm. which I'm glad I get to show out there because like, I mean, you can do this, you can follow these steps and like make it happen. That's how I learned like doing even eyeshadow growing up was like watching videos of like how to put eyeshadow. I was that crazy person though that did a lot of like glittery, shiny blues and <laughs> greens. And I was like, Ooh, well, I love, all these, I love all these questions from the young girls. Like yeah. this is from, well, this one's from Isabella Snow. Yeah. And she's asking what makeup brand would you recommend to people who just started wearing makeup? For me? Yeah. Personally or Danielle? But I think this would be a good question for Danielle too, for the, you know, beginners who are just starting to I experiment with makeup. I started off with, there was, uh, I think it's called Neutrogena Clean. Mm -hmm. Danielle, you might, I don't know if you know anything about I still it. wear Neutrogena powder, setting powder. <laughs> yeah, they're a great company. And I remember, I think I started off with that. I was nervous to try something too heavy because I, it, just so quickly you can go overboard and then it looks like, I had done it a couple of times and it was caked on my face. Like I'd used MAC or something and it just looked caked on my face. So I liked starting off with something like a L'Oreal, or not L'Oreal, Neutrogena Clean, I believe is what it was called. Mm -hmm. Um, and you could buy it at a local drugstore and I remember it felt light on my skin. It didn't feel like it was clogging my pores and it covered up 
Uh, it just made my face look like one consistent color and didn't show blemishes and stuff. But what would you say is a good starting one? That was just what I did. I mean, luckily, like you said, like Neutrogena is probably fine. I don't use that one. But a lot of the drugstore brands have come such a long way mm -hmm. where their coloring is on point, you know, their consistency is on point. So it kind of depends what kind of one, what kind of uh, income bracket you're in, and also what kind of things you're covering. But I love a brand called Cogendo. It's a little hard I've to find. I've never heard that. Cogendo. It's, yeah, they're amazing, and it's ultra light, and it's also very good for your skin. It's an Asian brand, so, you know, they're really into their skincare lines. Um, but it, it, did, it does get a little bit pricey, but... It has such a nice, flawless consistency, and it's not very heavy. So especially for a young girl who, you know, she's lucky she has good skin. She doesn't need a lot of coverage. So. What do you think about, though, having, when you do have acne and putting makeup on top of it? Like, I was a kid, going back to the, the girl that asked about makeup at a young age and 17, and she's never worn makeup yet, is, like, I did avoid putting makeup over zits to the point where, like, my sister was like, you look... That's gross. I can see your zit. But I was always like, but I don't want my skin to scar and it's natural and I don't want to cover it up. Like, how do you deal with if you have acne and then you're just putting makeup on top of it's, it? It doesn't just make the situation worse. It's not great, but you know, who wants to sort of walk around with big old zits on their face? So you I just did. have to, that just goes back to, that just goes back to skincare though. You have to make sure you're properly cleansing all of that off at the end of the day and I think that some people think they're getting it all off but they're really not so it might be like a multiple step process which I think is sometimes more even more important is really making sure your facial routine at night and in the morning is really something that works for you and I've tried a bunch of different products but there was a video I saw on the Instagram account the skin spot I think you recommended that I follow them was it you? Know that with me. um and she showed a video of what a makeup removing wipe does. So some people just use a makeup removing wipe at night oh, that is, and go to bed. Yeah, that's not going to get anything off. And she showed this video that was like such a great a yeah. way of um, explaining it from a visual standpoint. Is she did it on an or she put makeup on an orange and then wipe use the makeup wipe to wipe off the orange and or to wipe off the makeup off the orange and basically all the little pores mm -hmm. on the orange yeah. makeup was left. Right. And so it was like, oh, so finding like a good exfoliant, finding a good face cleanser, mm -hmm. a toner and lotion, I think is really important. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. We're getting close to 11.30 and we're at, well, we're at 11.23, but I just wanted for anybody who's just tuning in or joining us now, Danielle, can you give them a little update about what we're doing today? And um, also Reach it's Danielle. Maddie, you. you. Always you. <laughs> Unless I specify single Danielle. And also, How many single, single L Danielle? Yeah, the only difference between our names is mine is spelt with two L's and the other Danielle is spelt with one L. But, um, and it, for uh, there's a couple people asking. It's Maddie behind the camera. I'm filming. Yes, Maddie is behind the camera. Yeah. This is I'm with my makeup artist, Danielle, with one L. Um, <laughs> and we're doing, uh, there was a competition, not a competition, a, a vote that was put into place the last couple days about um, one of the makeup looks that Danielle has done on me before and the look you chose we're recreating on camera so you guys can see the steps and what goes into um, making one of those looks happen. So mm -hmm. Danielle works her magic on me because mm -hmm. I can guarantee you I can't do this on myself but I think too I haven't actually dedicated enough time to try to do it. I've been... Yeah, which is um, good. Don't, don't do that. Don't <laughs> 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 well, Danielle doesn't want me to learn how to do no. makeup. <laughs> and a lot of what we've talked about so far is Danielle is really has like the artistry touch to makeup. You know, she's able to create these different looks where you can go from evening to daytime to red carpet to interview. So she has the artistry behind it that makes you have these unique and interesting and photographable looks and that's why we have her here today to kind of teach us, you know, what it takes to to do a daytime look. The one that y'all voted for. And it really is an, like an, it's an, it's artistry. Absolutely. Because even like the certain colors, like she was saying, there's different reds to use. And I thought my lip was red and she's like, no, that was actually a pink. Mm -hmm. Like it really does make a difference. And I think what's interesting is you see what the camera would see or what other people would see where sometimes when you're doing things yourself, like I think something looks peach and she's like, no, that's pink. <laughs> like I think there's you also know how to match it with what I'm wearing to what my hair looks like to what my hair color is at the time like we had to change up my makeup completely when my hair was dark mm -hmm. so it really fun. it was fun. fun 
Um, it what you know you really do have to adjust things because certain things just don't. It's a whole va It's a whole. It all goes together. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's so great at making me look way better than I deserve to look. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Any it's other so gorgeous naturally, but it's it is fun to step it up. Thanks for saying. That. Mm -hmm. So what have we done that we've missed since I've been talking? Everyone's here. Um, you did the setting, last I remember was the setting, no, the setting powder after the foundation. I did a setting powder and then I did like the tiniest bit of contour with you. Ooh, um, where did you put the contouring? You know, uh, under the cheekbone, a little bit on your nose. That's Jack. kind of it. You I have really, a great jawline already. We don't need to. I always like the nose one. Much. I don't know why. I just always like yeah. this little. And did you do it under here too? Yeah. You guys probably saw. Yeah. I was and, and it's not. I don't like, because a, a lot of, like, Instagram artists or whatever, they will do, like, a heavy line, and I just like to have just the tiniest bit of contour when it comes, because I want you to go out in real life and not look like you have crazy lines on your face, so. So the contouring. It's like a perfect kind of, a happy medium for sure, Which and now I'm going in onto your brow with a. Anastasia. Which would we have to say Anastasia might be the best in brows coloring? I'm seeing that brow thing Everywhere. that she's using and I want one. <laughs> <laughs> I have that brow flick. Yeah. I want that too. I yeah. really need to ask for some of those. But this is really good. This is the the brow gel in the pot, which I really like because it really stays well. And you have a lot of time to work with it. Now, someone like me, I don't have a ton of eyebrow. Mm -mm. And just so everyone knows, like, I don't wax my eyebrows, nothing. Like, that's just, my eyebrows don't grow a ton of hair. And I'm always envious of those people that have thick, you know, luscious eyebrows. That's okay, though. It is, but it's like, it, with it, when it comes to, like, finding my shape. Also, too, my eyebrows are shaped differently, aren't they? We always have to manipulate one. Yeah. <laughs> lot, lot, most people have two different, it's just. A few freaks of nature that really are totally symmetrical, but... They're sisters, not twins. Yeah, they're sisters, not Eyebrows, twins. Eyebrows, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, brushing the hair is always good to see. You don't want to fully full... You don't want to fill in every little part of your brow, so... Kind of just brush it and then figure out where you want to fake some hair. But Do I have some bald spots in my eyebrows? Oh, not too bad, but yeah. <laughs> again, we're kind of doing this look for more camera vibes, mm -hmm. so you want it to just be a little more filled in for camera than you would maybe just going to lunch or the grocery stores. Ollie Vela, her username is, whoa, shoot, sorry. Um... <laughs> Her username is, I wanted to get it because she asked, like, it's such a poignant question. But she asked about um, um, improving your self-confidence. Mm -hmm. And I want to hear about, like, what you think makeup can help, how makeup can contribute to self-confidence in the, in the way that, you know, you present yourself to the world, but not necessarily have it be everything. We know self-confidence comes from within, but what, what feels good to you about, like, getting a look done and then walking out and and presenting yourself in that way question. it's a great question and like you said I, we do you do want to make sure you feel comfortable in your own skin I think without makeup and make sure you feel beautiful and love yourself and self-compassion and all that without the makeup too I think that's really important and sometimes that takes me it took me years to kind of be um just like in love with myself in that regard but mm -hmm. I think it's nice to get dolled up it's nice to have because all makeup should be doing is, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Danielle, is accentuating what you already have, the beauty you already have. Yeah. So I think it's good to kind of every once in a while get a little dolled up. And I think in this year of COVID and quarantine, I've noticed even more that, you know, even though I didn't need to wear makeup, it was kind of nice every once in a while. And I think you guys have noticed on WeChat Wednesdays to get a little dolled up every once in a while. Totally. Um... And I think it's just fun, but I think it's good to not feel like you need to rely on it, that it's something you need to do every day. But I also think it's really nice to get in touch with your face, it, to mm -hmm. learn your facial routine, to learn what makeup looks good on you. And I think it's always nice to kind of have that tool. Um, but yeah. I, I love it. Good answer. That's great. 
I loved that question. You guys that was a are, great question. Thank you so much for all these questions. You guys are asking such awesome questions. I want to shout out Marina Squad Brazil. Woo! What's Hi, Brazil. up, guys? Y'all are being so active and so fun. Travis Scott forever. We see you. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. I'm really enjoying this. Hopefully everyone is too. How, how are you doing over there, Danielle? It's so crazy to not be holding the camera and doing the live like myself. <laughs> um, like we maybe have done this once or twice before, like the first time we ever started doing lives. So it's so weird to just like not have it in front of me, but... I want to say hi to everyone and thanks for tuning in. This We Chat Wednesdays is going. This is being is so much fun, and I'm glad that Stefani and I came up with it and that we've been able to do it. And hopefully, this is fun for you guys to kind of engage with this while the show's not on the air. Um, what else? What are we on now, Danielle? Okay, so <laughs> something went on my eyes, but I have no idea what it was. So that was just a bit of primer to okay. help our um, our powders and everything stick. So now I'm gonna go in, I think, I think with this gold pencil from Makeup Forever. Oh, I like Makeup Forever. Yeah. yeah I, love Ooh, I had a question that kind of tied in from earlier is when we were talking about um, skincare and mm -hmm. is, would do you like the vegan or natural organic products that have come out? Like you had mentioned you put Kosas on, which is a... Was it it's more of a clean, yeah. Clean. Yeah. Do you think that that's better for your skin in general to make sure you try to gear all your makeup towards clean products? I think if products? you can, just from also for your skin, but also just from a worldly well, perspective. Well, the sustainability and the yeah, cruelty free and stuff, yeah. absolutely. Free as you can. Of course, we all love our chemicals and we do what we can, but if one day the products will be be there they're not quite all there yet but i have faith that they will be so but yes if you can do especially if you're just doing it for yourself and you don't need something to be on the red carpet and sure there are plenty of products that can take you there and kosas is a great brand um say is another clean beauty brand that i really love say is yeah. it say why it's S A I E. Okay, and that's a clean one too. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard of that one. They use RMS on the show. RMS is great, but I glad you can use it, but I cannot use it because it has coconut, so much coconut oil in it. It I breaks of, me out. I heard about that. Stefania was the same. They tried to use yeah. RMS on Stefania's skin as well, and oh, um, hers breaks so out with it. Sad. So I don't know why. I'm very. I can handle coconut. You all, I very remember well. when you were just like slathering it everywhere. <laughs> I yeah. love coconut oil. I'm so oil. jealous because it's if you can handle it, obviously, like yum. But I my skin just can't handle it. But they ha they do have some really beautiful products as well. So you know my skin can handle though is rosehip oil. Interesting. Which a lot of other people can. So it's interesting how the make a lot of people love rosehip oil, and I got an oil once and tried rosehip oil, and it made my face break out. Oh no! I wonder if that's like because of your complexion or not complexion, but like the your skin type, like oilier versus dry or whatever. Yeah. What would you consider my skin type be? Would it? Because I always think I'm oily. Your combination for sure. Okay. Because you can get dry, but then you also have a lot of good oil. So I would say you're definitely a combination. Maybe more on the oilier side, but you know, this fair skin can get dry also. So, my fair skin. This is a question for Danielle 1L. Yes, Danielle. Uh, <laughs> Sav Savory Sunshine at Savory Sunshine wants oh, to know yeah, how you started pursuing makeup. Yeah, so I was a model when I was a teenager and. I thought I wanted to branch off into production and be a director or something like that when I moved to Hollywood. And then I started PAing. And if anyone I did not ever done PA. that, it is like hard. It's awful. <laughs> it's so awful. I gotta give props to those people, especially in film and television and all that. And I did that for a minute and then I thought, oh, I need a skill. Like this is like too many things going on at once. Like if I have to do this for much longer. It's not going to work. And obviously, it took me 10 years to build 
a clientele as a makeup artist and build up my skills, but at least I knew what I wanted to do and there was no wavering that fact. And I think I just naturally kind of understood faces and sculpture or the shapes and all that stuff because I was in the fashion industry when I was younger. But yeah, kind of just all. Did you like doing your own makeup growing up too? Were you always like, like well, sometimes I, I know. I was the girl that, I wasn't very good, but I was totally <laughs> the girl that did everyone else's makeup yeah. yeah so she said she wasn't good but she was there's always that one person i actually oh, have a friend sure. janelle that was the in high school she was the one that kind of did everyone's makeup for parties and stuff and because she was and yeah for proms and stuff because mm -hmm. she was so good at it so that was you yeah that so was you me. were good at it too i mean i guess i you you look back and you're like wow that was but also the styles have changed so much even if you watch a j-lo video from the late 90s or 2000s, the makeup looks terrible. It's just, I guess, <laughs> so maybe that's what it was. I now, was just, terrible how? What do you mean by terrible? Like, what was what has changed with the makeup over the last 30 so years? So much. It's just, well, now we really are sculpting faces again uh, in, a, in such a way where it's subtle. So it really has become such an art. And I think in the 2000s, we were just like wilding out, you know, the glitters and the... I like the glitter. Yeah. <laughs> I was glitter. guilty. The glitter's coming back, I feel like, euphoria. I mean, the glitter's always in, but yeah. you know what I mean? That kind of just like no other color to it or anything. It just like, you just slap some glitter on your eyelid and... Which I'm all about in normal day life, but you know, for carpet or a music video or something. We're going to sculpt. We're all about sculpting now, but there's a right and a, a wrong way to do that, of course. So right now we're at 1137, and I want to check in with Danielle, too, about the eye look that she's starting. Yeah, so we're go I'm going in. I did that gold pencil. I'm going in with this Lorac Pro palette, and I'm kind of just going in with this medium kind of camel brown shade that really makes Danielle's eye, blue eyes pop. Tell. So I've so just pretty. gone all over the lid, especially into the crease. Uh, open Danielle, and now I'm gonna go underneath her eye a little bit too, just kind of make a little more dimension. And just so everyone knows, this was never, this, I used to blink all the time and like, <laughs> Oh, she could not sit still. <laughs> I'm actually doing very well sitting still oh today. Gosh, I tend to do this a lot and talk. Oh my God, it did it yeah. And then she's like, oh my God, stop moving. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when it came to like, when she did my eyes, I used to blink. And I have contacts too, because I uh, have very, very, very bad eyesight. So this used to always be so difficult for yeah. me to do, and it just took time. Yeah, but now you're a pro, man. Watch, I start blinking now that I said no, it. No, no, no. Yeah, I know. Uh, but yeah, we're just kind of adding a bit of dimension and I can kind of go over with my finger so we don't have a hard line. And it just kind of adds a little extra layer. But yeah, nothing too heavy, but it's all about the layering. Can you see me Oh yeah, that's looking really pretty already. Mm -hmm. Cool. And I think it's nice to know if you're doing your own makeup that anything's fixable. Nothing's permanent. I have made some horrible, like, I put on an eyeshadow, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> and then I'm like, it's okay, just restart. Because sometimes it can be overwhelming when you're learning something new. Close, yeah. But I'll let Danielle keep explaining what she's doing. I'm just going in with a slightly darker shade and really carving out that crease and kind of extending out the shape because we're going to continue with a wing on top of this so we're just it's all about extending the eye now what do you mean by extending the eye uh just kind of like pulling it out a bit so they look a little bit more cat like okay yeah danielle it's megan keating's birthday on saturday on friday would you like to say happy birthday to her Happy birthday, Megan! <laughs> <laughs> she's been she's been asking, so you know, I figured. Happy birthday! It is my sister's birthday tomorrow, and my one of my best friends Macy's birthday on Monday. There's a lot of birthdays going on. We got a lot of Aquariuses in the house. Yeah, what does that yep. mean? I don't know. 
But happy birthday. I hope you have an amazing day. You said it was Friday? Friday. Happy birthday. Katerina Porter wants to know, how long does it take for a glam look for a red carpet event? It usually takes about an hour. When you're doing hair and makeup, it takes two hours at least. Uh, you Honestly... We could take all day if you let us. <laughs> Hair and makeup and styling. We could just talk and hang and fix things. We could do it all day if they let us. That's but, so cute. Yeah. But, you know, usually at least an hour. Which is another, I was just thinking, like, during COVID and quarantine, and, like, I know a lot of people have been learning how to cook or getting into different workout routines. Like, it's also nice to learn I think a lot makeup, of people have been studying hair. makeup as well, Yeah you know, new skin routines, because you have this time to really pamper yourself. Yeah. I've been giving myself home manicures and pedicures, which is so nice. Yeah. I've been doing that too. You can tell. Oh, your nails are great. Yeah. Yeah. You've always been good about that though. I feel like. I've tried, but you know, you especially playing a firefighter on television, they're always like chipped in different levels. Oh, and yeah. Danielle has gorgeous nails. They'll, like, grow out, like, this long, and we have to tell her, Danielle, those are too long, you weirdo. You have to cut those down. <laughs> you think everything I have is gorgeous. So nice it's to true. Me. It's true. I mean, obviously. Well, we're all here watching. We're watching. And as I'm looking outside, it's getting, I think it's going to start raining. Yeah, it looks awesome outside. I'm so excited. Nice, See? cozy weather. So, yeah, I'm just re-blending everything. Now, would you say brushes are also a huge factor? Definitely. You have to have good brushes. Now, what is a good brush, though? Like, would you, like, do you have a certain company you love? Or, like, is it the texture? Is it how it feels on your skin? Well, for the most part, especially when you're doing blending, and you don't want anything too stiff. There are very few times when you need a So really, not stiff. Yeah. Very okay. few times when you need a stiff brush. And that's like what eyebrows and maybe eyeliner or something. Yeah, or if you're doing, and this I'm just kind of cleaning up again. Um, yeah, or a contour or something like that, where you would use something more stiff. Now, how many Q-tips do you go through normally? I don't think you're using as many today, but I feel like so many times we have Q-tips. Well, we'll <laughs> see. Let's see how handy. we do with this eyeliner. But not plastic ones. Plastic Q-tips are bad for the environment. Yeah. Biodegradable. Yeah, biodegradable. Paper. I think I tell you this every time, Danielle, but you have the cutest tattoos. Oh, Danielle me? single L, yeah. I knew you were talking about her. That. I was like, yes, no, she <laughs> But there's a that. lot of people writing that they didn't realize that you had tattoos, Danielle, but I don't even see your tattoos right now. Are they seeing my... Did oh. I talk about them earlier? Oh, maybe when you're on this you're on side. This side? Yeah. yeah. I, I do have tattoos, everyone. I have three. Three little tiny ones. And I always think I'm going to get more, but I think you have to think really long and hard about what you want to get. I have three little tiny ones now, too. You have the wrist and then what else? I like I just got, a lot. Thank you. I just got a new one. When did you get that? I love it. Thank you. <gasps> I got it January 9th. Oh, my God. For anyone that wants to see my tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I'm going in with, like, a glittery gold. Hopefully it won't go all over the place, but if it does, we can clean it up later. Oh, that's so pretty. Gorgeous. Yeah, and that's in the same palette. What's nice about getting your makeup done is you go in knowing how you look, and then I don't see a mirror <laughs> this entire time, and then all of a sudden I'm done and I look at the mirror, and there's been multiple times where... <laughs> You're like, whoa. She'll hear me. I'll walk to the bathroom after getting my makeup done. I'm like, oh my gosh. You're like, I look great. Holy moly. Who's that? Who's that girl? Yeah. <laughs> that is fun. I highly recommend getting all dolled up and even going to the grocery store. It feels good. Yeah. Are you going to wear this look all day, Danielle? Heck yeah. You have to. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah, you have to. Like, sometimes it just feels good. Totally. Get out of the, you know, workout pants, sweatpants, and a boot <laughs> vibe. For as real. great as that is. I'm just going to go in with a slightly smudgier, darker brown now. Any other questions, Maddie? Yeah, we got tons. Um, let's see. Let's find us a good one.
Can you tell the difference between one eye being done and one eye not? Oh, totally, yeah. Um, all right, let me get you a good question here. What makeup do you recommend for covering tattoos? <laughs> oh, Danielle? Well, they, what is that one brand that's specifically for that? Yeah, there's one they use on set, and I never know the brand because it's like in the most generic plastic it's like, looking. Uh, but you put it on with yeah. alcohol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With like, um, not drinking alcohol, like rubbing alcohol, mm -hmm. where you spray the rubbing all, all on set. That's how they have to cover men up every day just in case because they can't be shown on camera. But they'll spray it with it's rubbing so alcohol. It's so crazy to me. What? Which is so crazy because everyone has tattoos. A lot of people have tattoos. Yeah. A lot of people. Um, but apparently Maya Bishop does not. <laughs> well, you can't have tattoos. So just so people know, you can't have tattoos on in film and television unless they get approved by the actual tattoo artist. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah, so it's, like, it's like a licensing thing? It's a licensing, yeah. licensing thing. I so had no idea. Sometimes it's, wow. yeah, because Look they're like. this knowledge. <laughs> None of us knew this. That's I'll try to find the brand when I'm on set so you guys know if you want to cover tattoos. I do know there's makeup brands I've seen on Instagram and stuff that are specifically that they say are good for covering tattoos, but those are like sleeves and stuff. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to like a tattoo here or there, they just use this one brand. But yes, it is a licensing issue where they would have to get approval from That's the actual insane. tattoo artist. I did not know that. Yep. So sometimes they'll do it and sometimes they don't want the character to have them. And then other times they're like, it's just not worth the energy to get the approval. Imagine uh, the doing, what's his name? Ben Affleck's. They'd have to oh, his whole back, right? Oh my God. There's a lot of, and I'm not going to call people out on our show that have tattoos. That's their decision. If they want to tell you that they have tattoos, but there's a lot of people on our show that have a lot of tattoos. <laughs> so there's a lot of um, tattoo covering going on. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm doing a little time check. We're at 11.47. Okay. So... How are you doing, Danielle? We're time? getting pretty close. Yeah. Oh! I have a mirror to the right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Gorge. We have a full 60 minutes, or is it 50? I forget. It, it's like 58. It'll shut you down. So we want to make sure we save it before then. Okay. But it's more a question of, Danielle, do you think you'll be done in less than 10 minutes? Right? Because you said we're at 47? Yeah, we're at 47. Oh, yeah. No. No, <laughs> she goes, yeah, no. no. So we'll make it into two videos. So okay. it's easy to turn off and turn back on. Mm -hmm. So just to be safe, do you want to turn off at 50 and we'll turn back on? Yeah, 50, we'll stop the live and then we'll take a pause for a second and then we'll hop back on so Danielle can finish showing you guys how she does the look on double L Danielle. And of course, we'll save all these videos so you guys can look back and if you want, follow along and maybe test this out on yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll post pictures in the stories of all the makeup brands that Danielle used today. So if yeah. you guys want to go and test it out, you can do that. Love it. It's so weird. Usually when Danielle's doing my makeup, I'm we're blasting music. Usually some <laughs> sort of pop. Lady Gaga, Britney Danielle Spears. Danielle is blasting music. I've gotten you addicted. Yeah, you have to admit. I do love the Dua Lipa now. Yes. So I, I used to drive Danielle crazy because we, we'd also go on long road trips to like do interviews in San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> that was a crazy trip. Yeah. And like all these other places. And so she's been stuck in the car with me, in planes with me, in hotels with me on numerous occasions. And I'm always blasting like Dua Lipa, Britney Spears, Lady Gaga. Yeah. Pop Any themes. pop music you yeah. can think of, and I think I almost killed her the first couple times, and now yeah. she's addicted to some of them. But so. now I like it, yeah. But yeah, it's usually that, and then I get very nervous um, before red carpet, so I usually will have a glass of champagne, but only one. <laughs> <laughs> but one little glass of Prosecco or champagne before red carpets, because they are very nerve-wracking, yeah. so totally. just calming nerves slightly. I've been here tons of times when Danielle is, like, helping you or getting your look ready and, yeah. and putting your makeup on. And there's also someone here doing hair. And then you're deciding on clothes. And it's a fun energy a lot, to be yeah. around. You know, it's exciting. And it's it and you can tell that there's, like, something to come in the evening, you know. And that's always <laughs> a fun feeling. I do love that. I really do. It is. The sad part with red carpets is that you do all. I mean, this is the fun process anyways. But you do all of this for what ends up being like 30 seconds totally down a red carpet right or nowadays any color carpet, blue carpets tan carpets white carpets we have every color carpet now but um 
you know, you end up, it's 30 seconds basically, and you have no control over the pictures. So you hope, and going back to that look you guys love so much, I loved that look too, the one that I wore to the Mercedes Benz Oscar party. And I love that look, but we really, there wasn't a one picture that I loved about that look because, because there wasn't a like formal carpet or something, there wasn't right? it wasn't a formal carpet it was basically just you stood in front of the mercedes emblem and they took pictures um the lighting was not the lighting great. was not great so yeah. it also is kind of sad sometimes when you take that picture and you're like oh i love this look and the best pictures i liked from that night were actually inside with the people i took pictures with um like jake barelli's um cedric yarbo Yar i'm butchering his last name yarbo um, Yarborough. Yarborough? Yeah. Yarborough. Yeah. So those were like some of my favorite pictures were actually inside with people. But I loved that look. And sadly, like that was one of the situations where I never got an amazing red carpet picture from that look. Yeah. So it happens. It happens really fast. And it's kind of like that's I think what makes you nervous is like you're trying to pose right mm -hmm. and not make funny faces um, so that you can get a good picture because so much time and effort was putting into making that look. All right. We're going to pause here. And um, we'll be right back so we can finish off the look. We'll see you in a little bit. Bye, guys. Bye.